Here's the candle, Mark. Do you have the matches, please? Oh, here. Now, Jenny, hold the two rods over the candle. What are you doing, Mark? This is my science project. I have two rods, one copper, the other wood. I have to see which one gets hot faster. Ow! <laughs> this one, right? <laughs> so what's the better conductor of heat, copper or wood? Copper. Gee, that was a neat experiment, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I smell smoke! Fire! Fire! Take it easy, know it all. It's just the smoke from this candle. We had to light the candle in order for Mark to do a science experiment. Well, I'm glad that you're all interested in science. But you have to be very careful when using matches and, and candles in the hideout. Huh, it's a wonder your smoke detector didn't go off. Smoke detector? You mean you don't have a smoke detector? Oh, oh well, at least you should have kept your fire extinguisher handy. What fire extinguisher? Oh, my. No safety precautions? Do you realize that a single match could burn this entire hideout right down to the ground? Oh, know-it-all. We're being careful. Well, I suggest you conduct your experiments in a little safer place. Okay, know-it-all. Come on, everybody. Okay, you know, sometimes know-it-all's a real pest. You can't be too careful when dealing with fire. Wait a minute. I do smell smoke. Oh my! Fire! Fire! Cassie! Wayne! Fire! Fire! What is it, Know It Owl? A fire! In the wastebasket! Mark, Jenny, you wait here. We're coming right up, Know It Owl! A fire! Fire! Oh. Oh. There! In the oh. wastebasket! Oh. Uh, here! You can use my fire oh. extinguisher! I... Quick! Uh. I don't know how to use it. Oh, I'll smother uh, the flames. Uh, yeah. Sarah. Oh, that's quick thinking there, Cassie. Ooh, the hideout. It could have burned to the ground. Gee, I feel really foolish. I don't know how to use a fire extinguisher. <laughs> what good is it if you don't know how to use it? What happened? Oh, the match I threw in the waste paper basket. I I bet the match was still hot, and it lit the paper that was still in the wastebasket. Well, why didn't he throw water over it? That's the way we usually put out fires. Oh, no, not all kinds of fires, Mark. What do you mean, know it all? Well, um, uh, well, well, perhaps a fireman could explain it a little better. And the safety rules to prevent fires in your home and hideout. Gee, I'm scared. If there was a fire, I wouldn't know what to do, where to go. Maybe we should talk to somebody in the know. You mean a fireman? You're absolutely correct there, Mark. Hey, my next door neighbor is a fireman. We'll invite him over to my house. Great. Oh, hey, let's go. Bye, Bye, Bye. Bye. I'm glad you invited me over here this morning. You know, it's very important that people learn how to fireproof their homes because you never know. Someday it might save your life. Fireman John, what causes most fires in the home? Most fires start because of carelessness. It could be from you or your folks. Uh, another thing that causes it is electrical wiring. A lot of times you'll have frayed wires. You want to check out your outlets. People also, they take extension cords and they try to extend them so they have a real long one. This is bad. What you want to do is buy a good, long extension cord. One of the big things is smoking. You know, hopefully you kids aren't smoking, but uh, maybe your parents do. A lot of times what they do is they'll smoke in bed. And by smoking in bed, sometimes they fall asleep and they forget about their cigarette. This falls down onto the mattress and it smolders in the mattress. By smoldering, what I mean is it slowly burns away and then eventually you have one big fire. It's a good start. So tell your parents not to smoke in bed. Also with cigarettes, you wanna do is empty the ashtray in a metal can with a, a lid on it. Uh, another thing too is with your oily rags, what you want to do is store them in a metal can because they, they can catch fire too just by being piled up. Put a lid on top of the can too. One big thing is you kids, you shouldn't play with matches. I know your parents have probably told you that. You don't want to play with matches because if you don't know what you're doing, you're gonna, you might just light it and blow it out and set it down, but it'll smolder on some paper and catch fire. So stay away from the matches. Another thing too, is down in your basement, your furnace 
and your hot water tank, they have flames in them. And a lot of times people, what they do is they put bags or boxes and they put them in front of the furnace or the hot water tank. So make sure you keep everything away. One more thing too to remember is in your kitchen, your stove, whether it's a gas or an electric stove, you could have something on top of the stove that might catch fire. So keep everything away. And if you are doing some cooking, helping your parents out with the cooking, don't wear loose clothing. Because especially in a, with a gas stove, if you're reaching over and you have something loose like a sleeve, your clothing is going to catch on fire. What should you do if a fire does start in your home? Well, hopefully you'll have a smoke detector. We do. Where should you put these smoke detectors? Well, I'll show you where ours are. Okay. <laughs> That's a good location because it's outside all the bedrooms. So my teddy's safe. Right. It's important to have one right near the basement where the furnace and the uh, hot water tank by the stairs. And another thing you should do is have your parents test it at least once a week to make sure the battery is good. And by doing that, all you have to do is press the button here. <laughs> Hear that noise? And uh, another, they have a safety feature. In case the battery should be low, it'll have a short beeping. Make sure your parents have a battery in there too. Now why don't we go to another dangerous area of the house, the kitchen. A fire extinguisher is a good thing to have in the kitchen and you should keep it near the stove. It's important to have it near the stove because you never know when a grease fire might break out on the stove. It's good to use to put it out. One thing I want to tell you too kids is I don't want you to be playing with the fire extinguisher. Let your parents put it out, okay? Another good thing to have is a box of baking soda. If you have baking soda nearby, you can sprinkle it over the fire and this will help smother the fire. But most important, it's good to plan a fire drill. Know where all the fire exits are in your home. Well, Fireman John, what's the first thing you should do if there is a fire? Well, the first thing that you should do is get out of the house. I thought it was to call the fire department. No, Mark, get out of the house. Have a planned meeting place, do a head count, make sure everybody is safe, and make sure everyone knows where your meeting place is at. In this house, we use the sidewalk as a place to meet. If you live in an apartment, a safe place to meet would be the parking lot. And what you want to do is meet approximately 500 feet away from the building. This is a good, safe meeting place. But Fireman John, what if a fire began and there was lots of smoke in the room? What would we do? Well, Mark, what you want to do is you want to get down, crawl, and what you want to do is stay close to the floor as you can because the heat and smoke rises. And this is where your safe air is to breathe. And also, you want to crawl towards your fire exit. Okay? Now, once you're outside and you're all safe, this is the time to call the fire department. And you should have the fire department number handy close to the phone. What would happen if the fire started in my bedroom? I go downstairs and notice that I'm on fire. Well, Jenny, what you want to do is you want to stop, drop, and roll. And the way you want to do this is you'd be running, you'd stop, drop to the floor, and then roll to smother the flames, okay? Why don't you try it now, okay? okay. Ready? Just stop, drop, and roll. Okay, that's very good. Now why don't we all have a fire drill now, okay? Let's go. Now we count to make sure everyone is here. Everyone is accounted for, Fireman John. Okay, I have a checklist here to follow. Okay, now remember to get the whole family to have a fire drill and practice. <laughs> Sounds like we've got our work cut out for us today. What? 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 We've got to get back to the hideout and follow Fireman John's safety checklist. And Jenny and Mark, if you check everything off on the checklist, I can make both of you junior fire marshals. Oh boy, boy that's, that's great. great! Will we get to wear a hat and everything? Sure. Just think, us junior fire marshals. <laughs> We've got a lot of work ahead of us. Let's go. Hickory Hideout will return after these messages. And now, back to Hickory Hideout. Mm. 
not so. You weren't supposed to eat all those marshmallows before we toast them. I was saving those for our crispy treat. Hmm? What, not so? Don't talk with your mouth full. Boom, I said. Did you get the matches? Sure, I got them from the campers on the far side of the park. Boy, did they have a big fire going. Well, give me the matches. Okay. Good. Now, all we gotta do is light this fire. Do you think we should? Ah, oh, come on, Cheryl. We've lit matches before. We built fires. But our counselor was watching us. Well, all we have to do is light these sticks here. Mm, I don't know. Oh, come on. Can't you just picture those toasty, delicious, scrumchy, melted marshmallows? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now. Okay. Okay, I'll strike it up. Well, we got it going good, that's so Yeah. Hand me the marshmallows. Oh, uh, I think they're all gone. Not so. You didn't eat all of the marshmallows, did you? Yeah, I think so. Mm. Now we'll have to go get some more. Okay, wait for me. Fire! Uh, uh, go get some water. Oh, who would have been so careless as to leave a campfire burning? Don't look at me. Oh, here we go. Someone left matches laying around. Wow. You know, a, a campfire can smolder for a long time. Maybe we should look in the camping book here and find out the proper way to put out a campfire. Mark, what are you doing? Oops. After all that Fireman John told us. Ah, uh, you're right, Jenny. Well, let's make sure that this campfire is all the way out. All right, it says to first add dirt. Okay, dirt. Good old dirt. Get some dirt from the pan here. And then water. Okay. Got some more water. And then you stir. Okay. And Spit last of all, you feel. Okay. Wait till Fireman John hears about this. We'll be junior fire marshals for sure. <laughs> Wait, we have to fireproof the hideout first. Let's go. Uh, oh boy, these marshmallows are heavy. Oh look, Nutso, somebody put out our fire. Now why would somebody want to do a mean thing like that? I don't know, uh, maybe we should start all over again. Oh, that's a lot of work, Cheryl. Why can't we just use that campfire from those campers across the way? I mean, you know, the place where we got the matches from. But we should do it ourselves. The first thing on the list, check for electrical cords that are old and worn. Well, we don't have to worry about that. There's no electricity in the hideout. But we do have a lot of old junk in the trunk, and some of that stuff might be easily caught on fire. Oh, just what Fireman John said to look for. Check. Paint brushes, turpentine, <laughs> paint. Rags. Yuck. Oh, boy. Check. For sure. Smoke alarm. Up oh, right here. Check the battery. Okay. Check. <laughs> Let's see. Where should we put it? How about right here? You know, maybe we've just been talking about fire too much, but I smell smoke. I smell smoke, too. Hey, look, it's not so. He's starting a fire. Come on, Jenny. No, you don't. As junior fire marshals to be, I say no playing with fire. So you, the campfire builders. Ah, come on, Mark. We know how to build fires. Why, we did it at Squirrel Camp. But there was a grown-up with you. And you left the fire burning? Come with us to the hideout. I think it's time you became junior fire marshals, too. Get a friend interested in fire prevention. Check. Good for you, Jenny and Mark. Hey, what else do we have to check off here? The phone number of the fire station next to the phone. Check. Not so. Yeah. Question. 
If you have to report a fire, what do you say? Help! Oh, um, that's, oh, that's uh, not uh, right. We say, hello, we have a fire. Goodbye. Oh, surely a fireman needs a lot more information than that. We give our street address, right? Oh, like one hickory hideout. <laughs> that way they'll know where we are. And if we know what kind of fire it is, we'll tell them. Hey, here's a special can for the baking soda. Good idea, check. Hey, Cassie, what would happen if I caught fire? Take a blanket and smother the flames. Ah! <laughs> check. <laughs> and the last and most important item on our safety checklist, the, the fire, fire drill, drill meeting, meeting place. place. Well, I say every squirrel for himself. Oh, no, not so. We have to have a special meeting place. But why? It's dangerous to run back into a burning building to check and see if everybody's gotten out. Let's get to the good part, the fire drill. Oh, now, wait a second, Mark. We have to plan our escape routes. Oh, we already have. We're going to run right out that door there. You need two routes. Oh. Well, let me see. We could go out the door, or we could go down the tree hole, or we could jump right out the window. But what about us? What if the door's on fire? Oh, I think we should buy a rope ladder so we can throw it out the window. Ding, 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 oh. ding. <laughs> fire drill. Cassie, Wayne, Not So Shirley, Mark, and me. That's everybody. The fire drill is complete. Check. We've checked off all the requirements for the Junior Fire Marshal badges. And we'll get our Junior Fire Marshal hats. Hey, it sounds like Fireman John is here to pick us up right now. It sounds like the fire trucks are coming this way. Do you all smell smoke? Yes, I do. It's on fire for real. Hickory Hideout will return right after these messages. And now, back to Hickory Hideout. I'm glad we chose a good meeting place like the Ball Diamond. There really is a fire over there. Look! Cassie and Wayne, do you think the hideout might burn down? Maybe we should get out of here someplace else, a safer place. Cassie, Nutso, Shirley, Jenny, Mark, and me. We're all accounted for. But no, it all. He's still in the hideout. I'll go get him. No, Mark, no, you can't. Don't you remember? But no, it all. He's up there, I'm sure, probably taking a snooze. Mark, I'll go with you. Wait, you two. You can't. It's too dangerous. Don't you remember what we learned? We have got to stay here. But no, it Let's go get a fireman to rescue him. <laughs> Did somebody call me? <laughs> no, it all. You're flying. Why, certainly, Cassie. We birds do that very well. You're safe. <laughs> yes, I flew out my emergency exit. And from up here, I can see that the firemen have the fire under control. Hmm, it looks like from here that somebody left a campfire burning. <laughs> The hideout is safe! And so are we. Look, Fireman John, we completed our checklist. Good job, everybody. <laughs> nice outfit you have there, Fireman John. Thank you. Can you tell us something about it? Sure. Let me tell you about my helmet here first. This helmet, you can see, is very hard. In case I'm in a fire, and the ceiling or some of the walls should happen to fall down, Ooh. they hit on the helmet and that protects my head. That way I don't get any head injuries. Also on the helmet you'll see here that I have a visor. Now this visor I can put down so when I'm pulling away at a ceiling or in a fire and debris is flying around, this will protect my eyes. Also on my helmet I have this here, this flap that flaps down over my ears. This protects my ears so my ears don't get burned. And I also have a chin strap here that keeps the helmet sturdy on my head so it doesn't fall off in case something should fall down on the helmet. Mm -hmm. Why don't you hold that for me, Mark? <laughs> sure. Okay, another thing I have here is a mask. This is called a Scott Air mask. And what I do is I have this on my face. This keeps all the smoke and any fumes, toxic fumes that might be in the room, from getting into my lungs so it protects me. I have fresh air that I'm breathing the whole time that, while I'm in there. 
And on my back, you can see my air tank, which is where all the air is stored. Let me take this off for you, okay? There you go. Also, I have fire gloves. These are to protect my hands. They're somewhat fireproof. And in case I should touch something hot, it somewhat protects me. Why do you have Thanks. yellow stripes? These yellow stripes are reflective markers. Now this is so you can see me at night when I'm getting out of the fire engine so the motorists don't run us over in their cars. Also, when we're inside the fire, it's, the smoke is very thick. So by seeing these stripes, I can look up and I can see my fellow firefighters that are in the fire. So it's, it's a little added protection and it's, that way we can keep an eye on everybody. I also carry a flashlight. Now this flashlight <laughs> is so, it, most of our fires happen at night, so the flashlight, it's gonna be dark and inside, we don't have any electricity on because that's one of our safety factors. We cut the electricity. Underneath my coat, I have my fire pants. These are called bunker pants. I have suspenders to hold them up. Like they say, firemen wear red <laughs> suspenders. That's true. Now my boots, I have special boots. On the boots, the toe, I have a steel toed. And also on the bottom of the boot, it's all steel. Since you're all here, why not ride back to the fire station with us? In the truck? Sure. Us too? Everybody. <laughs> Visiting the fire station, learning all about how a fireman puts a fire out. The alarm bell rang. It went clangity clang. The alarm bell rang and then we knew we get to ride in engine number 222. When the fire alarm sounds, then what do we do? We get ready to leave in engine 222. We put on a helmet and get into place and start on our ride with a wind in our face. The siren wails and the loud horn blows. The ladders are ready And there's a great big special fire hose As the engine rolls along We must hold on tight With our flashing warning lights We are quite a sight It's a real adventure and a lot of fun too Riding on engine number 222 Riding on engine number 222 John, there's something I always wanted to do. Can I can I blow the horn? Sure, not so. Okay, here goes. Ah.